My journey began in Munich, the biggest city in southern Germany. Its close proximity to the mountains made it the perfect starting point for my Alps crossing adventure. Linking Munich and the floating city of Venice is approximately 550 kilometers of cycle paths, gravel roads, forest trails, and low traffic secondary roads. Along the route, one could stay in picturesque towns nestled in the Dolomites and eat one of the best cuisines in the world. I couldn't think of a better route for my first solo bike trip. So, it's my first time talking to the camera. It's day one of biking. Yesterday I stayed with Betty, my friend who I met from exchange. Me and her roommates, we went to like this outdoor film festival. That was really cool. As a person who prefers to be around people more often than not, I had no experience doing a solo adventure like this. Neither did I have any experience bike camping or bike touring for more than a couple of days. On my first day, I passed a lot of farmland south of Germany. After around 65 kilometers and 500 meters of elevation gain, I entered Lake Tegernsee, where I was going to spend the first night of my journey. Almost all the bike tours I saw on my 9-day journey were actually older folks on e-bikes. It was pretty cool to see how the e-bike has unlocked so many adventures for so many people. Although, on this first day, it hit me how lonely this trip might end up feeling. Good morning. I'm just packing up my stuff right now. It's... Um... 6.50 a.m. I think I'm the first one up in the area. Um, last night, there was a thunderstorm. I was pretty scared. It was the first time I'm staying in this tent while it's raining. Um, it was really windy, so I couldn't sleep for, for around an hour. So far, it's been a really good trail. It's been around 20 kilometers on like a gravel path, which is awesome. Um, there were a couple up hills I just had to push my bike because with uh, my 30 to 40 kilogram setup, it was pretty hard to go uphill, and I only have eight gears on this on this bike. But anyways, I've really been enjoying this trail. I am covered from the sun, most most part. On day two, I was most excited about crossing the border to Austria. So this is what the border looks like. No different between the Austrian side and the German side. Yeah, now I'm in. Uh, Austria, Austria side, and German side. After 50 kilometers of biking and going through the border, I left Germany and arrived in Lake Aachen, or Aachensee. I was really excited to start seeing more and bigger mountains. That night, I was able to camp right beside the beautiful lake. So I made it in time in Aachensee, in Austria, just in time to miss this crazy shower and thunderstorm. And I'm just gonna have my meal inside, which is this sandwich I bought a while ago, um, and a Rattler that I brought all the way here from Munich. I'm just thinking how lucky I am that I'm not biking in this in this thunderstorm. I just finished my sandwich and now I'm moving on to dessert. The candy game here in Germany and Austria is unreal. Like they have so much good candy. Today I'm trying mushrooms. It's like soft, soft mushroom candy. This is what it looks like. But yeah, really lucky I'm not I am not biking in this weather. Good morning, day three on the bike. So I'm leaving Aachensee and heading to Innsbruck today. Um, I'm not really sure if I'll stay in Innsbruck. Depends on what time I get there. I might 
go to a further town and cross the border to Italy. Entering Innsbruck now, which is pretty exciting because it's the first big city of the trip since Munich. On day three, I entered and stayed in Innsbruck, Austria. I was really impressed by all the colorful buildings and the mountain range backdrop everywhere you looked. Exploring the city on my bike, I felt separated from the crowds of people, while still feeling very immersed and connected to my surroundings. Stay tuned for the next part of this series, where I cover my favorite section of the trip, entering the Italian Alps and exploring the Dolomites. <laughs>